Recently, I was on tour to a state where marijuana is not legal, and I wanted some, and my mom wasn't around. So, <laughs> I sent a text to a buddy of mine. He replied back in three minutes, and he goes, here's my drug dealer's address. He's expecting you. I was like, wow. Yeah, that feels sudden. I don't know what I thought was gonna happen. Like, he's gonna send me a list of names. I'm gonna yelp the drug dealers. Like, oh, <laughs> Slayer has four stars. Let's go with that guy, you know? Yeah. But I'm not gonna just drive to a random address in the middle of the night for a little bit of pot. That's ridiculous. So I'm driving to a random address in the middle of the night for <laughs> just a little bit of pot. And I'm realizing on the ride there, I'm like, this is exactly why weed needs to be legal everywhere. I shouldn't have to get stabbed behind a dumpster of a 7-Eleven just to make a Ben Stiller movie funny for once. That seems like too much work. A lot more Ben Stiller fans than I thought, but... Uh, I get to the guy's house, and he opens the door, and he goes, Oh my God, Andrew Rivers from Dry Bar Comedy? My friends are never going to believe that you're at my house buying drugs. I was like, you don't have to tell them. If they're not gonna believe you anyway, maybe we can skip a step, you know? He goes, come in, man, I'm gonna hook you up. He kept saying that all night. He's like, I'm hooking you up. You're getting hooked up tonight. And now only bring that up so you know the rest of the story is his fault. So, <laughs> I get in there, he is hooking me up. He's literally pouring marijuana out of a coffee can into a giant Ziploc bag. <laughs> And I'm like, well, that's more than I asked for, but I deserve it. So, I didn't know. But then I thought, like, maybe I'm taking advantage of him because he thinks I'm a big celebrity or whatever. You know, I don't want to ruin his whole imagination. He's going to call TMZ the next day and be like, guess who bought drugs? And they're like, who? And then he's like, oh, no. So I was like, why don't I just, like, give him 20 bucks out of the generosity of my heart. I really thought I was being a nice guy. And uh, so I get 20 bucks out of my pocket, I'm like counting it up, and he goes, yeah, man, that'll just be $100. Yeah, this is clearly not my fault. <laughs> I do obviously don't know the drug dealer lingo, okay? When he said he's hooking me up, I thought I was getting free drugs. <laughs> He meant like a student discount, you know what I mean? <laughs> Imagine if I said, I'm hooking you guys up with tickets tonight, and then you showed up and they're like, it's $40 each. And you'd be like, ah, that's a reasonable price for a level of talent we're about to see, but <laughs> we really had our hearts set on free. Maybe we could work out an early bird special or something, you know? <laughs> so I, I just, I didn't want to back out of the transaction also, because I didn't know if that was like a faux pas of drug deals. Like, when the bag is sealed, so is the deal, man. You know, I was like... So I just accidentally bought $100 worth of marijuana. And then I left. I gave him four stars on drug dealer Yelp. I figured, you know, fast service, good hours, but does not accept his competitors' coupons. I get to my hotel, I smoke a joint, and then the next day, I'm driving to the airport because it was my last day in town, which is why I only wanted a little bit of marijuana in the first place. So I'm driving to the airport, and I'm realizing, like, what am I gonna do with $99 of leftover marijuana? I can't just throw it away. I can hear my mom now. There are starving kids in China that would love to have that marijuana, you know, so. Then I had an idea. I was like, I'll just mail it to myself. Yeah. Where would he come up with that plan? <laughs> Thanks, Mom. I get to the post office. I hand the guy my package. And then we have a moment. Because we both realized at the exact same time that simply adding a second Ziploc bag does not cover the smell of $99 worth of marijuana. I know that seems obvious, but this is still my first felony. You gotta remember, the other one was downgraded to a misdemeanor, so this is crazy. You're not gonna believe this. It turns out when you smoke marijuana, you also smell like marijuana. <laughs> So the whole car ride, I put it in another bag and I was like, I don't smell anything. 
And I got to the post office, I put it in another bag, and I was like, I don't smell anything. And then as soon as I handed it to the guy, I was like, that's all I smell. And then he made eye contact as if to confirm it. He was like, don't do this to me, man. You put me in a tough spot. So I just backed down slowly. I was like, be my guy on the inside. I get to my car and I immediately Googled, what happens if I mailed myself drugs? <laughs> Which has gotta be the dumbest move of all time. I'm still on their Wi-Fi. Like they don't even need a warrant to just go through my phone and be like, oh, look at that. Super guilty. Also not the most embarrassing thing on my search history, okay? Definitely the most illegal, but not the most embarrassing. They were stepsisters, that's fine, technically. Don't worry about it. <laughs> Couple days later, I get home. I do not have a package of drugs, but I do have a love letter from the post office. And it says, hey, we confiscated your package because we suspect that there are drugs in it. I'm like, wow, what gave you that impression? <laughs> And the letter says, hey, we don't have a warrant to open your package, so we're gonna just hang on to it. Unless you wanna come down. We can just open it together, you know? <laughs> if there's no drugs, you'd just be on your way. I'm like, I think you guys just hang on to it. I don't know. I don't know who's trying to send me drugs, but I do not approve of that, all right? I probably shouldn't have used my mom's return address. I just figured she's already in the system. I'm not going down like that. Okay? 